An Uber-like app called Aero is about to hit New York City's taxi fleet. The new Apple TV remote is gonna be dope. Avid Life Media CEO steps down over the Ashley Madison scandal, and more. It's Friday, August 28th, and this is Crunch Report. Hello, everybody. Okay, according to Cranes New York, which covers the city's business, a new app called Aero is being beta tested on 7,000 yellow and green taxis in the New York City area, which lets passengers order a regular cab via the app. So it's like Uber, but just not Uber. It's set to fully launch in a couple of weeks and include all 20,000 green and yellow taxis in the city. Once a nearby cab is assigned the fare, the user receives the name of the driver and then the car ID so they can find the right taxi. One big difference though, Aero won't have surge pricing during busy times. That of course is when Uber's app charges a higher rate at times of high demand or when it's raining or when there's a baseball game or some other time that no one understands. Uber and New York's Taxi and Limousine Commission, or TLC, are really not on good terms. Mayor Bill de Blasio, you might remember, recently tried to limit the number of new Uber drivers allowed on the road in New York, and Uber fought back, forcing the bill back to the drawing board. But cabs are still a really big part of New York City. Will Aero appeal to the masses that haven't hopped onto Uber yet, or at least don't like surge pricing? We'll find out soon. TechCrunch's Matthew Panzerino has some Apple TV information coming from multiple sources. Some of this we've heard already, that the new Apple TV will be redesigned and have an updated interface that helps navigate through content more easily. It'll also sport Apple's A8 chip. That way game developers can get more creative with apps that are power intensive. And then a native SDK would essentially turn the Apple TV into a, a platform for all of those developers. A new remote will control the new Apple TV. And the word is, it'll be a little bigger, a little thicker, with physical buttons on the bottom half, a touchpad area, and a mic for Siri. And I say hallelujah, death to the current remote, and whatever couch cushions it's hiding between. Here's a new twist though. The remote will be motion sensitive. This is according to sources, equipped with sensors that would make it act like a Nintendo Wii remote. So now you've got a remote that's a game controller, has a microphone, has physical buttons, a touchpad, and is motion sensitive? Thanks for playing Nintendo. Now on the content side, there have been reports of trouble that Apple's been having with its TV streaming service getting locked down and ready for prime time. Content providers want money for these deals, and word is Apple may have delayed the Apple TV from being released at WWDC back in June due to negotiations stalling. However, by building a platform for third-party content that works well, it's only a matter of time before Apple gets what it wants, if history serves. Avid Life Media, which owns the Ashley Madison Extramarital Affair website, has a CEO. His name is Noel Biderman, who is now stepping down. Ashley Madison has been basically blown apart by a massive hack that exposed the account details of 37 million users, plus company information contained in emails that revealed some, oh, let's call it shady behavior inside Ashley Madison on Biderman's watch. For example, the site had very few active female users, it turns out. Of the 37 million profiles, only about 12,000, 12,000 were active women. So the company was paying people to build fake profiles. And the impact team, that's the anonymous group claiming responsibility for the hack, says Ashley Madison took users' money in exchange for a full profile deletion, but then wasn't fully wiping user data. ALM says Biderman's departure is a mutual agreement and that the company will be led by senior management until a new CEO is chosen. ALM also says it's still working with law enforcement to attempt to find those responsible. Last year, Twitter joined the tech company trend by publishing its diversity numbers. That's how the company breaks down by different backgrounds and cultures of its employees. Last July, 70% of Twitter employees were men and 72% of Twitter managers were white. That wasn't good enough for the company, apparently, because the company has posted today it's committed to making its U.S. workforce more diverse by the end of next year, that's 2016, specifically by increasing the number of female employees to 35%, women in tech roles to 16%, that's up from 10, and women in leadership roles to 25%, up from 21. Twitter also has a goal of raising its minority employee numbers to 11% overall, that would be up from 7% last year, 9% in tech roles, and 6% in leadership roles. Woo, way to reach for the stars, Twitter, 6%. It is going in the right direction, at least. The company says that the changes should reflect the vast range of people who use Twitter. 
Earlier this year, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, said that it would start beta testing an app that would help drone flyers that's people who fly drones, understand where it is cool and not cool to fly. Today, the FAA's first private beta version of Before You Fly, all in caps with the letter 4 for iOS, is live, with an Android version in the works. No word on when that's coming, but it's in the works. Purpose, very simple. Are you too close to an airport? Are you in a national park? Drones aren't allowed there. Are you in some other restricted area? you might not know, and that's what the app is for. For example, if you're within five miles of an airport, you can only fly after you notify the airport operator or talk to air traffic control. Did you know that? You probably didn't. Well, maybe you did. You'll also be able to plan future flights in the app and check whether there's any issue with where you are currently. The FAA says that future versions of the app will also include a system that's built in for notifying air traffic control of your intent to fly within this five mile zone. And that is the report for today. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. Yeah.